In my live science trivia show, Quizotron, I always used to end with a round called Science According to the Daily Mail. And after several rounds of answering questions about real science, it was fun to ask questions like, according to the Daily Mail, what's the moon made of? Because the answer could literally be anything from cheese to Muslims. Muslims were pretty much always the answer for the Daily Mail back then. But over time, the Daily Feel has actually chilled out considerably. I finally had to swap the theme to Science According to InfoWars because the Daily Mail science section was more consistently publishing actual science news, albeit with really dumb, randomly capitalized titles and interspersed with things that weren't actually science, like... The ultimate billionaire's retreat, James Bond-style luxury super yacht that could transform into a submarine, allowing occupants to hold meetings in complete secrecy, is revealed. And Jesus Christ, that's a long headline. Why does it have to be that long? Still, though, sometimes they report on real science, but they get it really wrong. And so that's why today I wanted to talk a little bit about an article I found titled, Humans have a natural lifespan of only 38 years, but our life expectancy has more than doubled over the centuries thanks to lifestyle changes and advances in medicine. My first thought was, wow, what a stupid and wrong headline. Uh, it's followed up by humans have a maximum natural lifespan of only 38 years, according to researchers who have discovered a way to estimate how long a species lives based on its DNA. Like, what the fuck is a maximum natural lifespan? 38 here. I mean, I'm I'm sitting here at the age of 39. Have I entered into my unnatural life? I wondered what actual science this article was based on. So I did that thing I do where... I went back and read the actual paper and I tried to figure out who was wrong. The scientists who did the study, the Daily Mail, me, or some combination thereof. The real science was done by the Commonwealth Scientific and Industrial Research Organization, which is Australia's national science agency in charge of scientific research. Uh, Dr. Benjamin Main is a molecular biologist there, and he led a team that looked at the genes of vertebrates to determine which ones are related to a species' total lifespan. They compared those to the maximum lifespan for various known species using Anage, a resource that collects verified accounts of the oldest known specimen for many different species. Uh, The team then used the patterns they found to create what they call a predictive lifespan clock, which would allow them to figure out the maximum age of a species just by looking at their genes. The idea is that no matter what happens in an animal's life, if it avoids every predator, mortal illness, or accident, it still can't live past a certain time because at some point its DNA is just going to break down, causing all kinds of problems that are eventually going to lead to death. That's just life. Uh, it's to be expected if we consider that the purpose of a species in general is to reproduce and then stop taking up the resources that are going to help the next generation reproduce. So once you're past the age at which you can reproduce, we can expect in an overly simplified world that you're going to die. Uh, we don't live in an overly simplified world, uh, which is why there are species that live long past their reproductive age, like humans. Uh, but we'll, we'll address that in a minute. Um, the genetic breakdown is what determines your maximum lifespan. Being able to study some DNA and figure out the species max lifespan would be very helpful for studying uh, little known or even extinct species. So the researchers applied their new tool to animals like the woolly mammoth, which they found had a max lifespan of about 60 years. Cool. They then applied their tool to ancient Homo sapiens and found that it said that they had a max lifespan of, sure enough, 38 years. But the paper doesn't actually make it clear whether they looked at ancient human or modern human DNA, which is strange considering research that shows that humans may likely be genetically evolving to be more long-lived. I assume they looked at ancient DNA, since it's pretty obvious humans today do not currently have a maximum lifespan of 38 years. 
But more on that in a minute. The scientists write, in the past 200 years, the average life expectancy of humans has more than doubled because of modern medicine and changes in lifestyle. Early humans have been reported to have a maximum life expectancy of 40 years. And there you have it. That's where the Daily Mail got their headline. So I can't exactly blame them for this. Here's the problem. The authors back up that last sentence by linking to two articles, both of which are summaries of the literature and neither of which say anything about early humans' maximum life expectancy. They only guess at average human lifespan, and there's a big difference between those two terms. If you have two subjects, one who dies at one year of age and one who dies at 40 years of age, the average lifespan is going to be about 20, but we have no idea what the max life expectancy is because we need so much more information. We know it's at least 40, but it could be 200. We can't observe a large population of the species in the Panglossian best of all possible worlds. We can only observe some individuals in this world to see what happens. One of the paper's references, Broken Limits to Life Expectancy, published in Science in 2002, is even explicitly about this. Experts have repeatedly asserted that life expectancy expectancy for humans is approaching a ceiling. These experts have repeatedly been proven wrong. Awkward when you cite an article that kind of pokes a hole in one of your points. How the Australian study handles humans can give us some insight into how they got the idea that humans, ancient or modern, have a maximum lifespan of 38 years. As I mentioned, they use data from an age to figure out the oldest known individual of each species, but they discarded the data for humans. Why? They write, we removed humans, homo sapiens, from the data set as they were listed with a maximum lifespan of 120 years, which does not reflect the variability and the true global average lifespan, 60.9 to 86.3 years. This is the point where my brain just straight up exploded, because this implies that the researchers themselves are confusing maximum possible lifespan with average lifespan. Like, I literally started writing this video to be about how the Daily Mail made this mistake, but that the research must be sound. But then I read the research and realized that no, it's the researchers that did it. Which brings us back to the idea that ancient humans had a maximum lifespan about 40 years. I'll be honest, I was skeptical of that immediately, um, thanks to the common misconception that everybody was dying by 40 before the 20th century, when in fact the problem was mostly that everyone was dying as children. If you lived to adulthood, you were likely to live at least until your hair went gray. But then I learned that the human genome really has done a lot of evolving in terms of longevity in the past 100,000 years. So I thought, okay, maybe the researchers are correct and early Homo sapiens really were succumbing to their broken DNA by the age of 40. But now I'm not so sure when they conflate average lifespan with max lifespan and when they base their research on human specific promoters, but then delete human data from the max lifespan and report that the average life expectancy of humans has doubled in the past two centuries without offering context on that regarding people dying as children. For the record, the references the paper pointed to are much more educational on this point, uh, discussing issues like human life expectancy once you reach the age of 50. I actually learned a lot while going down this rabbit hole. My biggest takeaway was this. We don't know what the maximum human lifespan is. And every time a scientist takes a stab at it, we beat it a few years later. Or in one hilarious case, we beat it before the paper is even published. In 1928, a scientist named uh, Lewis Dublin published a study that he based on U.S. mortality figures. He claimed that 64.75 years was as long as a person could hope to live. At that very moment, non-Maori women in New Zealand were regularly living to 65.93 years of age. Oops. So to get back to the Daily Mail, no, the natural human lifespan is not 38. 
if there is a natural human lifespan and if we do invent ways to surpass it, then that will no longer be the natural human lifespan. Uh, humans are natural. We do natural things. We are starting to change our own genes. And when we do that, then that will be natural. If it comes down to it, the only way that we will outlive our final genetic death sentence is by uploading our consciousnesses into the cloud, which of course will be sponsored by Facebook and it's really going to suck. So honestly, if you die before then, you're probably better off. <laughs>